All right, we're going to go ahead and get started back here if we could. Uh, at this time, we're going to move to the Fisheries Management Committee. I'm going to ask Chairman Bledsoe to make the introductions. Thank you, Chairman McMillan. Uh, I am Jim Bledsoe, Chairman of the Fisheries Committee. First, I'd like to recognize Bobby Wilson, Chief of the Fisheries Division, to discuss Commercial Fishing Proclamation 1401, the Turtle, turtle Proclamation. <coughs> turtle, it's, turtle. it's Commercial Fishing. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Bledsoe. It's um, back in September. This commission approved a change in, in the proclamation. It was October, wasn't it? Huh? It was October, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Was it oh, October? the but the sep I believe it was uh, before the commercial fishing proclamation. It might have been September. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, the back in the fall, the um, the commission voted to to uh, make some changes, several changes in the commercial fishing proclamation, and one of them dealt with the commercial harvest of turtles. It established a season uh, on the commercial harvest of turtles before it was just open statewide. And the season was, it would be from um, March to through October. So that we added in there and everything was fine. And then we uh, realized after looking back through, there were a couple of places where it still said statewide in the commercial fish proclamation. So all we're doing here is basically a, uh, making that change, open up commercial proclamation to make that change to include the season where it said statewide before. Oh. That's it. That's all I got. Do we, do we need nope, to, no do PowerPoint. We, do we need to vote on that change? What's that? We got to vote on that change, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Fisheries Committee has yes. to vote on that change. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, approve proclamation, the change in proclamation 1401. Second. We have a motion and a second. All the Fishery Committee in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Chairman McMillan, the Commercial Fisheries Committee recommends the correction to proclamate or cleanup of Proclamation 1401, Commercial Fisheries. We'll do it tomorrow. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. Any more questions? I get your preparation, Bobby. I had to make it. I had to make a note. You know that. <laughs> Is Director Carter still in the building? Oh, there. You are. <laughs> I, w I wasn't here when y'all voted on that. It was uh, Commissioner Cox, so that was where the slip-up was, I believe. <laughs> I said I wasn't here when y'all voted on that in October, and you was in charge, so that's where the slip-up was. Mr. Chairman, why, next subject. Quick. All right, we're going to move on to the Retention <laughs> Recruitment Committee. <laughs> At this time, I'll ask uh, Chairman Stroud. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chair, I'd like to recognize Johnny McFarland at South Quail Forever for a presentation on Youth Hunter Education Challenge. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Chairman McMillan, yeah. Director Carter, uh, Committee Chairman Stroud, and Commissioners. I'm Johnny McFarlane. I'm a member of the Mid-South chapter of Quail Forever, part of the Pheasants Forever family. As I'm sure you're aware, Habitat is our goal, and the Tennessee Quail Forever chapters, TWRA, Pheasants Forever have all partnered to hire two farm bell biologists for West Tennessee. And on behalf of the Mid-South Quail Forever uh, chapter, just want you to know we're grateful and proud of your commitment to fish and wildlife in the state of Tennessee. For the past three years, our Quail Forever chapter has hosted the Youth Hunter Education Challenge. And people ask, well, what the heck is why heck? Well, it encourages young people to turn off the TV, get <coughs> off the couch, and get outdoors. Falls in also with the Quail Forever No Child Left Indoors initiative. It's a comprehensive youth hunting program that challenges young people's hunting skills, safety knowledge and marksmanship. It is the NRA graduate program in outdoor skills and safety training. The West Tennessee, Tennessee Wildlife Resources officers have been instrumental in making it possible for our, whoop, maybe I can get some help. Thank you. It has been instrumental in making it possible for our chapter
Okay, thank you, to host this event. Uh, what I've got here is not a PowerPoint today, but just a collection of photos from the past three years of the event we've held in Oakland, Tennessee at Anderson Farms. Uh, Ronnie Downs and Sherry Anderson are our host. Uh, officers from West Tennessee that have helped us have included Ty Inman, Steve Henderson, Ray McMillan, Dave Gabbard, and others have served as riceful and archery instructors, as well as supplying equipment such as bows and rifles for the kids to use. We've also had assistance from Avery Outdoors, Bass Pro Shop, and Sportsman's Warehouse. The YHEC event consists of marksmanship in archery, rifle, muzzleloader, and shotgun. The skills tested include wildlife identification, uh, a hunter safety trail, and hunter skills where they learn to use a, well, where they use a compass and uh, measure distances and find safe and unsafe situations. And as well, we have a, which usually isn't fun to tell them on first thing on a pretty Saturday morning after school's just let out, that uh, one group of them are going to go and take a written test, but we have a written hunter safety exam for them as well. As a local event, we have featured rifle, archery, wildlife identification, hunter safety, and hunter skills. And this year, we hope to add a shotgun event. And as you can tell from these pictures, the TWRA officers in West Tennessee have been a huge help uh, in enabling us to put this event on in both equipment and manpower. Our participants pay no fee uh, to participate, though we do point out to them that it's by no means a free event. A lot of people spend a lot of time and money to put it on for them. The kids that participate range from kids who have har uh, actually harvested deer and duck and may even have a eight or nine point deer on the wall and we have kids that have never even picked up a rifle before. Um, for the kids with some experience, they are some pretty intense competitors and this event is scored and there are awards. For the kids that haven't done a lot of this, and there we got one looking at a safe, unsafe situation on a deer stand. For the kids that don't have a lot of experience in the outdoors, uh, it's a learning experience for them and for so many of them, they are uh, encouraged to go and get their hunter safety certificate after they participate in this event. As a local event, they don't have to have their hunter safety card to participate. We encourage them to, or at least go and get it afterwards. Uh, our funding has come from grants from the NRA, Midway USA, our chapter funds, Modern Woodman of America, and Friends of NRA, as well as donations of money, equipment, and time from Avery Sportsman's Warehouse and Bass Pro Shop. On a national level, some 50,000 kids a year participate in the event nationally, um, and winners in the, in the very active states on the state competition, winners of the state competition go on to the international event that's held at the NRA Whittington Center in New Mexico. And I understand there were 400 kids at the international event in 2013. The uh, Quail Forever No Child Left Indoors uh, initiative, as I said, is part of getting the kids out and involved in the outdoors. I'm in the process of encouraging the other Quail Forever chapters in Tennessee to begin hosting these events and ultimately have a uh, statewide program of the Youth Hunter Education Challenge. What we're trying to do is pass down our hunting and conservation ethics to a younger generation. And today I, I thanked Director Carter in a couple of letters about this, but again, we so much appreciate the help you've lent us on this. And just tell the commission about it is I'm anticipating it being a growing event over the next few years. And if I can answer any questions about it for you, I'm more than happy to. Where in New Mexico? Uh, the Whittington Center is the NRA Ranch in Raton, New Mexico. That's where they have the international event. All right. Well, thank you, guys. That's all I have. Thank you, Johnny.
Appreciate it. Chair, I'd like to recognize Shane Hall now. He's the coordinator of Moment of Freedom. Yeah, wherever you want to go, Shane. Mr. Chairman, if I may, while he's coming up. Yes, sir. I asked Shane if he would come by today. And, uh, I won't go into all the history because the commission knows that pretty well and that the moment of freedom that the commission went forward in, Shane, we worked with the National Wild Turkey Federation to do a joint project to, of, of funding through a contract to, for Shane to become our coordinator. I ask him today just to make sure that everybody remembered whether on the commission or, or people who are just interested, they could put a face and a name together and ask Shane if he'd just kind of bring us up to date on where we are and, and tell us where we're going. Chairman, uh, I appreciate this very much. I tell you, um, one thing I've, I've noticed with this commission is uh, you don't challenge you to do anything. Especially uh, when you next time you come in, you've got a book to go by that's, uh, that's, that's pretty awesome stuff. I just wanted to, to give you a brief update on something that um, we are, <clears throat> I've been up in um, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and we have sat down and talked to their outdoor rec and some of the um, garrison command up there and they're actually wanted to come on board and and be a uh i don't know if you call it a sponsor or help or whatever their role will be but they're wanting a couple of blinds built up there on their federal dod ground <clears throat> for our wounded soldiers um that has come along that meeting went very very well um i think it was about an hour and a half two hour meeting and before we left there everyone had email addresses and knew what each one's purpose was going to be throughout this as far as the funding goes on that site yet we haven't quite figured that out but but it will come here pretty soon i'm sure uh, the next thing i want to update you on is we're moving I've, I've decided to move this over into region three and uh, because there's not a whole lot of help over in that area of doing things for handicap accessibility so um so actually next wednesday i'm going to meet with uh, kurt uh, and those guys were going to uh, set up a meeting at Uchi, uh, and then we're also going to go to Cordell Hall. So that, uh, that in a nutshell, is what I've got. Uh, I'm excited. I'm pumped. I want the commission to be pumped with me, and let's roll with this thing, and, and uh, let's get some blinds built. Let's make some people happy, some kids happy, um, our wounded vets. I mean, this is what it's all about is them, you know. But also on the, you know, on the, on the other side of this deal is this is also going to be able to pull in some some good out-of-state license sales here in the near future especially when we get this thing rolling um, I've talked to the NWTF and we're also going to be doing a lot of magazine articles on this uh, we're actually going to send this out nationally so that this will actually come back maybe tenfold to us here in the state so they're excited about it as well they're they're uh, they're on board for for uh, this project and um, and that's pretty much all I have uh, Director Carter, I appreciate everything you've done for me as well and done for this project. So thank all of you very much. Harold Cannon, I appreciate y'all. Does anybody have any questions? or? Yes, sir, there's always opportunities. There's never not one moment there's not an opportunity. <laughs> yes, sir, I will be. I, Sure, I'm looking at uh, some actual uh, emails that have been corresponding back and forth between the, the uh, uh, I guess, the wildlife officers and some more that have been, been tasked to look into some areas. Um, I, I, I actually like some of the viewing areas up there that they're talking about putting in. That would be uh, remarkable. Um, and also some hunting blinds up in that area would be nice too. But uh, I think, you know, I think at first just going in with a, you know the attitude that we can do whatever you know we need to do up there to make uh, make folks happy and and also pull back in you know some uh, some funds back in later on. I think it's going to be a good deal. No, I'm I'm no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I've been studying the maps, so <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, I I agree, and it's uh, this is a. This is a project that's actually been needed to go on for a long time, as you know. I told y'all two years ago, um, and I just appreciate the support that this thing has, has got. The Moment of Freedom uh, campaign has rolled out, and um, I promise you, this is this is just the beginning. Um, I'm ready to go with this thing wide open. Uh, there's just going to have to be some meetings before long to figure out other things, but right now, 
I'm ready to go. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We're all partners in this, guys. It's just I haven't done any as far. That's uh, yeah. The fundraising is, from my understanding, was the commission was going to help uh, was going to do on some of the fundraising and uh, and maybe some of the some of the backbone work because um, you know as far as going out and getting the ADA compliance and and actually having the blinds built uh, on the sites that are that are ready and needed. Um, then I, you know, I can do that very quickly. Um, I can actually go out and have these blind sites marked um, and ready for construction in a matter of no time. And then once they're marked and ready to go, then it's just the funding from there, um, you know, and who, what volunteers we could get. And I'm sure the NWTF volunteers from some different chapters would be able to, to, to get on board to build those particular blinds. <clears throat> Shane, it's good to have you on board. I guess we've been, uh, it's taken a long time. The wheels of state government sometimes turn kind of slowly, but Ed, you pushed. You pushed hard on that wheel, so thank you. And uh, I think the commission is ready to support you in any way, including raising funds that you need. Uh, I think every region is excited about it. Clay, to your comment, I think the only boundaries on this is the state boundary. You've got a, if you've got a place that something can go, it needs to go. This is for the entire state. So it, it is so good to have you on board. Uh, get to work, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling. I'm so rolling. Too, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, we just had a blind built on a trailer, as a matter of fact, that uh, Eagle Scout took on uh, over in West Tennessee. <laughs> Um, and that blind is actually lined up to go, you know, to Middle Tennessee and back, you know, to be used um, for right now because we do so much. You know, if I think I've already put on uh, six events uh, since November the 29th, maybe something like that. So it's, I mean, we're rolling on with it. It's just the funding is what's going to have to start rolling. Well, excuse me for interrupting. One other thought, Ms. Schuster, I, I'm hearing from you and uh, from the from the foundation that you're ready as well to help with that fundraising effort. So we, we appreciate what you all will be doing and, and other groups as well. So it's, it's gonna be fun to watch. I think this is gonna be like a racehorse and take off pretty fast now that you're with us. So well, thanks, I appreciate for, it. thanks for being here. I appreciate it, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, Shane, uh, one thing, how, how do you determine, where, where do you get your uh, your list or your source of, of who, you, who that you uh, assign to certain hunts and all? I mean, how, how do you go about that? I mean, do you deal with Fort Campbell and all? I mean, where do you get the list for wounded warriors? Yes, um, I deal with the 5th Special Forces Group and the HUA Group, which stands for Healing Outside of a Hospital at Fort Campbell. Okay. It's a WTB, WTU unit. Uh, it's a Warrior Transition Unit, Warrior Transition Battalion unit. And uh, the HUA program is in that battalion unit. Um, these guys are and, and gals are freshly back from Af uh, Iraq or Afghanistan um, and some over in farther in the Middle East that uh, have been wounded in combat. Um, a lot of these men and women are not um, loss of limb, uh, things of that nature. They're just, uh, and, I, and I'll even call me normal, but you know, their their mental their mental is is not right. And and this is mental medicine for them, um, you know. And I don't mind telling you to take somebody on a hunt like that, and for them to sit down at the back of a duck blind, or to come into a a deer or turkey blind with you. And that, that man or woman or two or three of those men and women sit down and say, you know, for the last three days, I want to thank you for what you've done, TWRA included, because we've done some, some partnerships into hunts that where they can come in and they don't think about suicide for three or four days. You know, but yet this has given them momentum to keep going. In their mind, they're looking forward to that next event. They're looking forward to that next opportunity. And this mental medicine always provides them that opportunity something I'm very passionate about. But I'm also passionate about these blind sites for these men and women also 
but also for our disabled public, not only our disabled public in the state of Tennessee, but also from around the United States. Because I'm going to push this also at the National Convention this year through Save the Habitat, Save the Hunt with the National Wild Turkey Federation. They already know, so of course, but the Save the Habitat, Save the Hunt initiative will be pushed very strongly with this initiative for Moment of Freedom as well. So, you know, I'm just, I'm ecstatic. I'm excited. I'm ready to go with this. I'm ready to show our soldiers that we haven't forgotten them and that we're not going to let them sit back and think negative thoughts when there's actual, you know, things, other things they can do. Even when hunting season's not in, there's still things that we can do. So, you know, with that. Uh, I hope the commission remembers Terry Whitson that we uh, uh, honored in, at the Kingsport meeting in uh, October. He actually built a handicap blind on his uh, property and he's having a wounded warriors hunt for ducks. He actually built an impoundment. It's next door to my property. I drive by it and I see five, six, seven hundred ducks on it all the time and he would not let anybody hunt it. Not and it's going to be hunt tomorrow. Excuse me. Not counting the geese. That oh we're yeah, sitting four over or five hundred geese. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just I think what ducks that are east in East Tennessee are sitting in Terry's uh, impoundment, and uh, and he's going to have a wounded warriors hunt tomorrow. I assume that you lined up the hunters yes, for him, didn't you? Yes, sir. That so. hunt actually starts this afternoon. Uh, and Mr. Terry has graciously put them up and are feeding them for two days. So uh, we had four hunters go up, or were supposed to go. I just got a phone call just a moment ago. One of the hunters' grandfather passed away, so he couldn't make it. So we do have two little kids, I think, that are also with their dads up there. So this is a good, good thing for them. That's great. We certainly appreciate Dan, what you thank do. Thank you so much. You're, you're an inspiration to us, and we're honored to be partnered with you, pal. Shoot, I'm just, I'm just ready to go. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank y'all. I think, I think thank you. you and Harold at the helm of it, it just has a little back. I'm, I'm going to stay out of his way. I think great things will happen if I don't mess with him. Well, he's already told me I'm the quarterback, and he's just going to sit back on the sideline. And uh, so as long as we just didn't put him in the Lane Kiffin position, we were okay. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I liked you after that. <laughs> no, no, no. You misinterpreted. I said we're not going to put you in that position. There we go. Thank you all very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, Director, thank you also for everything that you've done. Um, I, think, I think this is going to go a long way, uh, not just this three years, but I think – in years to come, this is going to be a magnificent thing. Everyone in the state with the, the agency is on board that I've talked to. And I've seen emails that also say the same thing. These, these men and women are ready to get after this, these projects and start. And the agency is, is behind it 110%. So that's, uh, that makes you feel good all at the same time. So. Oh, I know. One of them's already told me, so they're fired up and ready to go. Listen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I didn't want to bore you anymore, but let's get on. Let's let's take off with this thing here soon. Figure out how we can do some fundraising. Thank you so much. Okay. Shane. Thank y'all very much. You. All right. Thank y'all. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you, um, uh, Commissioner Stroud. At this time, we'll move on then to the Government Relations Committee uh, Chairperson Jamie Woodson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as many of you all will remember, um, we had a the structure of this conversation is going to be twofold. One is to give us an update on the um, current legislative session. Uh, many of you know that the sex second Tuesday in January is the day where the legislature reconvenes, and so this is the first week of legislative session. There is an enormous amount of activity in Legislative Plaza right now, and so we'll have that portion, but we're also going to be continuing a conversation from our last meeting to really understand the legislative history around senior licenses and the background in that area. And so I'd like to ask Chris Richardson to join us and give us um, an update on that and really give us a full briefing both on the legislative uh, plaza activities of the, over the course of the last week um, and, and prior to that and, and just keep us moving forward. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. It is no longer an upcoming legislative session. It is here. Uh, 108th General Assembly convened on Tuesday and went straight to work. They're hearing bills. Bills are being read. Bills are being filed. Bills are being referred to committee. Um, we're tracking all the legislation as it comes in. Um, it, it's impossible to, to determine or tell you what to expect at this point, but we'll know on February 5th, which is the fi bill filing deadline. On February 5th, we'll know all the pending legislation, and I'll be able to come back hopefully in the February meeting with a report on all the, on all of the activity that's that's happened between now and then, and also what to expect 
for the remainder of the session. It appears by everyone's attitude at the legislative plaza and by the chatter that's going on, this is going to be a very quick session. Uh, the, the legislature is very interested in getting in, getting their work done, and going home. As you all well know, it's an election year, and there are some advantages to adjourning in a timely fashion. Um, the one piece of legislation that I'm sure most all of you are more concerned about than any other is our sunset legislation, which is up this year. Uh, I can tell you that bill has been introduced and read in the House, or excuse me, in the Senate, and has been referred to the Senate Government Operations Committee and will be heard next Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, all things look very well that that will, will, we will be successful in passing that out of committee. The companion bill that will run in the House has not been read or filed yet, but I'll certainly keep you up to date as that happens. Um, other than that, uh, it's, it's kind of a brief update right now. It's, it's in full swing, and as, as things develop, certainly get back with you all and let you know how things are progressing. But that's it for the legislative update on the session, unless there's any questions. I do want to touch uh, the second item that's on the agenda. I do want to briefly touch on Commissioner Watson and I attended a meeting over in Cleveland a week or so ago with some uh, members of the legislature and also some local county officials. Representative Eric Watson asked, uh, called the meeting together and asked Commissioner Watson to attend. The subject of the meeting was wild hogs. Um, we heard from several members of the wildlife commissions in Polk, Monroe, McMinn, Cumberland. Um, I'm probably leaving out a couple counties. There was probably about 30 people total that showed up. Uh, Representative Watson was president State Representative Paul Bailey, who is the new representative that's taken over for Charlie Curtis, uh, Senator Frank Nicely, and Representative John Fogarty were all present. Uh, we had a, a nice civil discussion regarding the wild hogs. Commissioner Watson and I listened uh, to all of the concerns, and I've taken those back to the agency, and uh, that's, that's where we're at on the discussion with the recent discussion on wild hogs. Uh, I, it was I think a, a, a different type of discussion from the hog hunters than this commission has had in the past. As I said, it was a very calm, civil, well-organized discussion, which I, I, I appreciated very much and um, found the discussion, I guess, helpful, if, if, if that's the right word. But um, certainly we may hear more about that. I anticipate there may be some, some hog legislation this year. Uh, so we'll be getting back with you on all things hogs as, as those issues develop. That is all I have on the second item, unless there are any questions. And I'm going to turn it over to Director Carter just briefly uh, before I give you legislative history of the senior license. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Uh, 